If playing games in a 3D world that you design yourself and learning basic programming at the same time sounds like fun to you, give Agent Cubes a try. In this movie, I'll show you how to create a 3D world in Agent Cubes, draw your own characters called agents to populate the world, and control their behavior with programming rules that you write yourself. You can listen to this whole movie, or anytime you're ready, pause the movie and create your own game. You can jump to different parts of this movie by clicking a heading in the table of contents to the right of the movie. The layout of Agent Cubes is pretty simple. When you create agents, like a frog or a truck, they'll appear in this list on the left called the Agents List, and you'll be able to add them to the 3D world that you're creating over here in the grid in this blue area. Down at the bottom of the screen is the Behavior Editor. This is where you'll create the programming rules that guide your agent's behavior. You'll start off by making your first agent. I'm going to make a frog agent. I'll go to the lower toolbar and I'll click the Agent button. In the window that opens, I'll choose Inflatable icon from the first column. That option will allow me to draw my own two-dimensional shape and inflate it into a three-dimensional shape. I'll leave the Animals category selected in the second column. In the third column, you could choose a pre-built frog icon, but it's way more fun to draw your own inflatable frog icon from scratch. To do that, I'll leave the default icon, the Akako, which is a ladybug, selected in the third column just to start with. And I'll go up to the name field, and I'll type frog, since I want to make my own frog icon. Then I'll click Save at the bottom right. Now I have an agent named Frog in the Agents list. It still looks like a ladybug here, but I'm going to make it look like a frog. I'll double-click this agent, being careful to click right on the icon, not on its name. That opens the agent into the Inflatable Icon Editor. To add more options to this window, I'll click the More Tools button in the center of the window. The area on the left is the 2D editor, where I'll draw a frog instead of this ladybug. To remove the ladybug from the 2D editor, I'll click the Clear button in the center of the window. In the toolbar on the left, I'll select the Mirror Vertically tool, which adds this blue line in the center of the 2D editor. As I'm drawing my frog in the 2D editor, anything I draw to the left of this line will be mirrored to the right side of the line. I'll make sure that the Pencil tool is selected at the top of the toolbar on the left, and I'll choose a color to draw with by clicking the Color Well in the toolbar and selecting a green crayon. I'll click OK to close the Color Picker. I'll draw the left side of the frog's head and body to the left of the blue line. What I draw here is automatically mirrored on the right side so the frog is symmetrical. I'll give my frog some front legs, and come all the way down to the bottom, and close the outline of the frog. If you make a mark that you don't want, like this, you can back up one step at a time by pressing Ctrl-Z on your keyboard. When I've made a complete outline of my frog, I'll fill it with the green color that's in the color well by going back to the toolbar and selecting the Paint Bucket tool and then clicking inside the outline of the frog. Now I'll create the frog's back legs in a different color. I'll click on the color well again, and this time I'll choose a darker green crayon, and I'll click OK. I'll go back to the toolbar, and I'll click the pencil tool again. And I'll use it to draw the frog's left leg, which is mirrored on the right side too. Again, I'll select the Paint Bucket tool in the toolbar, and I'll fill the left leg with green, and that fills the right leg, too. I'll finish up by giving my frog some eyes. I'll go back to the color well, click there, and I'll select the white crayon and click OK. Then I'll go back to the toolbar, and I'll select the Pencil tool again. I'll draw some eyes and I'll go back to the color well one more time and select the black crayon and click OK to add some pupils. 
To change my simple 2D drawing into a 3D frog, I'll inflate him using the plus button here. I'll click and hold this button as I keep my eye on the preview on the right to watch the frog inflate. To make his legs look more muscular, I'll inflate those even more. To do that, I'll go back to the toolbar and I'll select the magic wand tool. With that tool, I'll click on his left leg to select that, and then I'll hold the shift key and click on the right leg to add that leg to the selection. Then I'll go back to the plus button and I'll click and hold, keeping my eye on the preview on the right to see his legs inflate. And to deselect the legs, I'll press Ctrl D on my keyboard. Now I've finished creating my frog. To preview how he looks in 3D, I'll go to the toolbar on the right and I'll select the Rotate Camera tool. Then I'll click on the preview area on the right and I'll drag to rotate the frog. And then to save my frog, I'll click the Save button here and the inflatable icon editor closes. Back in the agents list, my frog now has a frog icon. I'd like to put my frog into the world that I'm building. So I'll make sure the frog is selected here in the agents list. I'll go to the upper toolbar and I'll make sure that the pencil tool is selected there. And then I'll go to the world and I'll click in the grid where I want the frog to be located. Whenever you make a change to the world like this, adding, deleting, or moving an agent, you need to save the world with that change. So I'll go to the upper toolbar and I'll click the Save button there. In the future, if I change my mind about something I've done to the world, I can go to this button, the Restore button, and click, and that will return the world to this state, the way it was when last saved. Now I have an agent, the frog, in my world, but I haven't yet told him what to do. For that, I need to program the frog's behavior by writing some programming rules. Rules are created here in the Behavior Editor. A rule combines conditions and actions. If all the conditions of a rule are true, then the actions will run and make the frog do things. There is the beginning of a rule in my Behavior Editor, this if-then statement. I want to add a condition and an action to this rule to make the frog move up in the world when I press the up arrow on my keyboard. The condition will be pressing the up arrow on my keyboard. The action will be that the frog moves up in the world. I'll make sure that the frog agent is selected in the agents list and in the upper toolbar, I'm going to select the black arrow tool. Then I'll go to the conditions panel. I'll click on the scroll bar and use it to scroll down to get to the key condition here. The white label on this condition is the starting value of the condition. It defines which key to press, the up arrow key. I'll click and drag this key condition from the conditions panel to the if part of the rule in the behavior editor. Next, I'll add an action that defines what the frog will do when the up arrow key is pressed. He'll move up in the world. I'll go over to the actions panel and I'll select the first action, the move action, and drag it onto the then part of the rule in the behavior editor. The white label on the move action is the value for this action. It will define the direction in which the frog will move. I want the frog to move up in the world, so I'll click this white label and I'll choose the up facing arrow as the value of this action. Now the frog will think like this. If the up arrow is pressed, then I'll move up in the world. Just this simple behavior empowers someone who plays your game to control your frog. Let's test it to see if it works. I'll go to the upper toolbar and I'll click the green run button. Now to test the rule, I'll press the up arrow on my keyboard. And look, the frog moves up each time that I press the up arrow key. The frog can now go up, but can it also go down, left, and right? No, it can only go up. We need three more rules to program the frog to move down, left, and right, too. Before adding those rules, I'll go back up to the upper toolbar and stop the game by clicking the red stop button. And I'll put the frog back where he started in the world by clicking the reload button in the upper toolbar, too.
Now I'll go down to the Behavior Editor, and I'll select the single rule there by clicking in a blank area of the rule. I'll duplicate this selected rule three times by going down to the lower toolbar and pressing the Duplicate button three times. I could have added a brand new rule by clicking the plus rule button on the lower toolbar, but since these rules are similar, I've saved time by duplicating. Now I'm going to edit these three new rules, so each will move the frog in a different direction. I'll go to the second rule, and I'll click the value on the key condition, that up arrow value, and I'll change the value of this condition to down arrow by pressing the down arrow on my keyboard. Then I'll go to the action for that second rule, and I'll change the value on the move action to down, by clicking the value on that action and choosing the down facing arrow. The second rule now tells the frog that if the down arrow is pressed on the keyboard, he'll move down in the world. See if you can program the third rule to move the frog left if the left arrow is pressed, and the fourth rule to move the frog right if the right arrow is pressed. When you're done, check to see if all the rules work. To do that, I'll go back to the upper toolbar and I'll press the green Run button. And now I'll press the different arrow keys on my keyboard to see if all the rules work. And the frog now moves in all directions. When I'm done testing, I'll go back to the upper toolbar and I'll click the red Stop button. And I'll click the Reload button to reload the world and get the frog back where he started.